guys and girls, probably the weirdest intro to this video there ever will be. Um, but it's editing day today and Bear was editing. He was like, Chloe, you haven't done an intro or an outro to this video. Your guys and girls aren't going to know what the hell it is about. So I'm just quickly coming on here today looking a bit dishevelled. But I just wanted to say welcome to another video. I hope you are all doing good. This video this week is going to be my favourite Slim and World fake away recipes. So in this video we've got a Nando's fake away. One of our absolute favourites and an absolute must try on Slim and World. We've then got like a Indian kind of slash Chinese um, chicken curry with a nam a nam bread <laughs> and then lastly we finish off the video with a salt and pepper chicken which is absolutely delicious just like the one you get from the Chinese so if you are interested in having a little look watching me make some of these amazing fake ways that you can have on Slimmer World and Beyond Plan then please carry on watching. This fake away is going to be a Nando's fake away. Nando's is one of our favourite restaurants to eat out at and you can do it really low sin um, if you do go and then you can obviously make it really low sin when you come home because of all the supermarkets doing all of the like Nando's branded stuff but I just thought that we could cook this all together I'll show you what I'm gonna have so my typical order at Nando's is a chicken butterfly normally plain because I am a bit of a wimp when it comes to spice however I have got the garlic one here today purely to show you guys that the sauces are around and that they are low in sin so if you do like hot which bear does he's got a hot one there which is fab because i ain't having that um so i normally have a chicken butterfly plain with spicy rice halloumi and the um mint macho peas and then oh i do love their chia batter garlic rolls and we are going to make that slimmer world friendly but obviously they're not slimmer world friendly in nando's but we're going to be using a healthy extra bee for that so i'm just going to talk through everything i've got here to make each individual item and then we're just going to crack on and cook really really easy i am opting to do most of it in the george foreman just because it's a lot quicker and it's nicer when you've got um, chicken butterfly to do it like on a grill. The same with the halloumi. So if you do have some sort of grill like this, then I definitely recommend getting it out for your Nando's fake away. Chicken, we have got these new. These are actually new from Aldi. I haven't seen them before. They're the quick cook chicken breast sizzlers. They are obviously sin free and they're already butterflied and done everything like that for us. So you don't have to worry about butterfly in a chicken breast. We're going to be using the Nando's peri peri rub this is the garlic one and it is three and a half cents for the whole sachet this will probably make two portions um for us um it does say it serves three to four but we do like our chicken really seasoned so we will use that just across um two people's portions worth so we'll obviously we'll sin accordingly for that then i have got the nando's peri peri sauce this is the garlic one and this is 0 0.5 sins for a tablespoon and then if you like it hot and spicy then the hot one is also 0 0.5 sins for a tablespoon so that's what we're going to do to create our nando's chicken we're going going to put it in the rub we're going to put it on the George Foreman and then once it's kind of cooked we're going to add some of our sauce and then maybe put a bit of sauce on the top as well next up will be our garlic bread so I am using this brand here I can never pronounce it the brown chia batter rolls they are one for your healthy extra B so I've saved my healthy extra B today so that we can have one of these this is what they look like so they're a decent size and what I'll do is I'll cut them in half so we're using one of them and then to make it garlicky and bready we're just going to use some of the easy lazy garlic which is sin free we're going to also mix that with some butter to make it nice and garlic bready this is one and a half sins for a teaspoon and then i'm just going to mix in some mixed herbs as well to make it like a garlic bread for the macho peas, um, I have got some frozen ones and I wasn't sure whether I had any frozen ones in the freezer so I did just buy some canned ones. I do prefer frozen ones so I'm going to use the frozen ones instead but any sort of peas they are sin free. And then to make the kind of like mint macho sauce I've just got here the Ocean Spray Mint Sauce. This is zero and a half sins. Zero and a half? Yeah. Half, zero and a half? Yeah, zero and a half sins um, for a tablespoon. So that is really, really low and really, really good. And I just love the flavour of this. Then to make them nice and spicy like Nando's do, we're just going to add some crushed chilli in with that. And then maybe some more mixed herb as well because I would like to add, add parsley in with the macho peas, but I don't have parsley on its own, but this has parsley in it. So I'm just going to mix that all together. 
Then lastly, for the spicy rice, we're just keeping it really simple, really standard. I'm using this Aldi Everyday Essentials Golden Vegetable Savory Rice. This is sin free, so easy to make. And then just to make it spicy, we're gonna add some chili powder, some smoked paprika, and some ground turmeric. So that is everything you need. And then I've just got some corn on the cob, which we will boil and maybe put on the George Foreman just to charcoal up a little bit. Oh, can't forget the best bit got some tesco halloumi here for my healthy extra a you can have 35 grams of this for your healthy extra a so i'm going to weigh out 35 grams and grill this on the george foreman and then that is basically everything done now, i will show you each step so you know how to cook everything but these are all of the ingredients now i know it looks like a lot but by the time you've got all of your sauces in the cupboard anyway which you might do and all your spices really the only things you need to buy is the chicken the rolls um, and then the halloumi so it's really really simple to do so satisfying loads of different elements to the dish which is what I like like you got a bit of cheese you got a bit of garlic bread you got a bit of rice you got a bit of chicken you got a bit of sauce you got a bit of peas you've got sweet corn so yeah it's a really really nice fake away dish so that you don't feel like you're missing out I've changed my mind. After putting one of the packs of chicken in here, I'm also going to add another pack just because I feel like this rub, there is quite a lot of it. And I'm just going to do it as like a batch cook so we can have it for lunch tomorrow. So I'm just going to use another packet of these. These are, um, how many grams? Uh, I don't say. Oh, 500 grams. So I'm using two 500 gram packs of these chicken breast scissors. Obviously you can butterfly your own chicken breast if you want to, but this was just convenient. It was new and I wanted to try it out. So I'm going to pop my chicken into a bowl and then simply rub all of my garlic, um, peri peri rub in with it. And then I've just popped the George Foreman on. So I'm then going to grill my chicken first. All of the rub has now been added. And then I've just added two tablespoons of the garlic um, sauce. So that's one sin. And I'm gonna mix that all together and then pop it on the George Foreman. In here, I've got the rice and boiling water. And I'm just popping this in the microwave. It's so easy to make. Um, it goes in the microwave for 13 minutes in a bowl. And I've put two lots of these in, um, just because, like I said, I'm doing it as a batch cook now, so I'm doubling up my quantity. So I've put two lots of this in, so I've doubled up the water, and it's going to go in the microwave for 13 minutes. So, so easy and so delicious. First bit of chicken is sizzling away so nicely. Um, it literally took like five to seven minutes to cook. It cooks also on both sides, so I'm just going to pop this to the side and carry on with the rest. Um, but this is why George Foreman's so easy grills like this and it obviously makes a nice lines which makes it similar to Nando's. How you do the garlic bread is you chop up your chia batters in half. So I've got four here. One is your healthy extra B. Um, I'm doing all four so that we can have one for tomorrow as well. So yeah. So And then in here I've got butter, lazy garlic and mixed herbs. I've got around three sins worth of butter here. I'm going to see how far it takes me. It might be the case that I need to add more just because I've got four, but it is one and a half sins for a teaspoon of that butter. I'm going to go ahead and mix this all together. I might heat it up a tiny bit just so it mix together a bit easily, easier. And then what you want to do is you want to fry, um, well spray, sorry, your the top of your chia batters with some fry light and then put on your butter as you would like normal any butter and then pop them in the oven for around uh, I don't know say 10 minutes have a little look at them if you want them even more crispier then do a bit more also if you want to do a cheesy garlic bread you can add cheese on top as well which is a really nice choice I'm having halloumi therefore I won't be adding any cheese to these but if you do like cheesy garlic bread and you don't like halloumi then you could always add some cheese on top our garlic bread chia batter is in the oven and now I'm just boiling some peas and boiling the corn on the cob. Our chicken's nearly finished. Um, I'm just going to boil this for a recommended normal amount of time. Then all you need to do is really, really simple. It's just mix in your mint sauce. Obviously drain your peas, mix in your mint sauce and your chilli. And if you want to add a little bit of butter, you can. I'm going to see what the consistency is like without the butter. Because if I don't need it, I don't want to add it. Um, but I'm just going to boil this boil my corn and then the rice is still cooking in the microwave so it's all kind of like really nicely done at the same time if you do it in the order that i'm doing it so that nothing's really going cold i mean some chicken is on the side waiting um, but what i can do is i can just warm it up when i'm doing the halloumi at the last step um but yeah really cannot wait smells amazing i'm so excited <laughs>
got my halloumi weighed out here. I'm gonna keep the chicken like residue on here because I feel like it would add something to the cheese. So I'm just gonna pop on my cheese. And let that grill. I've just drained my peas. Now I'm gonna go in, because I've got quite a lot of peas, like I think I've really miscounted, but it's fine because I can have it again tomorrow. Um, this is half a sin for a tablespoon, so I'm gonna go in with two tablespoons at first, and then mix it all together. And I think that might be enough, you know, so one sin's worth. And if you like them proper, like minty and creamy, you could always add another one. Um, that's looking quite good to be honest I might just add one more so that's one and a half sins because this is going to do four portions basically yeah that's plenty so I'm just mixing that all together then I'm just going to go in freehand with some mixed herbs just to add a bit more flavour in not crazy amounts just a little little something and then I'm just going to go in with some crushed chilies. not too much because I am a wuss when it comes to spice so just a little few it's going to come out mix that all together and basically that is your macho peas done if you want to add butter you can but that just looks and smells perfect for me so you can pop that on the side of your dish we've got our halloumi ready as well all we're waiting on now is um our corn on the cob to boil and then we are done to plate up and then i can show you what the chia batter has turned out like oh actually that's a lie we need to season the rice so the rice is just finished i am just going to put it into a little bowl now add some spices and some seasonings and then we're nearly good to go Last step is to just do the rice. So first off, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of mild chili powder. Then I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of... I'm not gonna focus. This is turmeric, basically. It's not gonna focus for me, but turmeric really hard for one hand <laughs> I should have propped you up really I'm just gonna wing it like that and then I'm just gonna add a bit of smoked paprika as well maybe I don't know whether that's too much and then I'm just gonna mix that all together and obviously depending on how spicy you want things you can add more you can add less whatever you want and then that is just spicy rice, which is sin free and so easy to do, all done. I'm just gonna carry on mixing this and then I'm ready to plate up and show you. Nando's at home. Oh my God, how amazing and satisfying does this fake away look? Now I know it looks like a lot, but we can have all of this. So why not fill your plates with amazing food and just feel like you're not missing out? So we've got the chicken here. I've got two little butterflies. I'm calling that half a sin for the sachet. I've got my halloumi here, which is my healthy extra A. I like kind of burnt. Then we've got the chia batters. Now they do look burnt, but they're not. It's just because they are obviously a brown um, chia batter. So that is um, healthy extra B. And then I'm going to call it half a sin for the butter. So, so far we're at one sin. Then I've got my macho peas here, which are half a sin. And then I've got my spicy rice there, which is sin free and a corn on the cob. So this is probably totally in what's that half, one and a half sins for all of this. So easy to do, so satisfying. And then I'm also going to drizzle on top some of the garlic sauce all over my chicken. So, probably another half a sin's worth of that. And it's going to total two sins plus your healthy extra A and your healthy extra B. Please let me know if you recreate this Nando's fake away. So simple to do. The rice is really, really nice. Make it as spicy as you want. And then corn on the cob optional. But I'm so very excited and I'm gonna put my chicken in the garlic bread and make it like a chicken burger as well. Howdy, 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 howdy. Welcome to fake away number two. Um, today is, well, this evening, when you're watching this, we are doing a Chinese chicken curry with a naan bread. So essentially it's a bit Indian with the curry um, and with the naan bread, but then this kind of curry sauce is more of like the chip shop 
Chinese curry sauce, if that makes sense. So kind of a mixture of a Chinese and an Indian, um, but it's so easy to do. It is so satisfying. It is one of those meals that I always have on a weekend when I'm feeling tempted by an actual takeaway. So if you haven't tried this recipe yet, I'm sure you have because it is so popular on Slimming World or Low Calorie or any kind of diet and plan then definitely try it out so i've got both here to show you i am a wuss when it comes to spice so i go for the medium this is the mayflower chicken curry and essentially what it is is a powder i will show you in a minute and you just add water to it to make the curry sauce so you've got a medium one here and then you also have an extra hot one there so if you've got any spicy lovers then they might want to opt for that one but we've just got a medium one here. And the sins are a bit confusing when you put it in the Slimmer World app. So I've just worked out that 35 grams is five sins. And that is the same for both the extra hot and the medium. Um, I'm making quite a big recipe um, for this. So I'm probably going to play it by air. But I'm probably going to do four lots of 35 um, grams. Because like I said, I have got a lot of chicken. And this is going to be like one of those batch cooks. So... It's a plate by ear recipe with regards to how much powder I'm going to put in, but I'll show you that. So that is the sort of curry sauce. And then with the chicken, which I've currently got in the slow cooker, I will explain. I've got mushrooms and onions that I will chop up and fry. And then for, obviously, the curry sauce is what... Okay. Basically, I'll show you step by step, but this is everything you need first. So you've got your curry sauce, your onions, your mushrooms. You'll need some rice, any rice will do. I've just got basmati rice. You'll then need some peas, any peas will do. And then for the naan bread, I here have got the bee free pita bread. You can have one of these as your healthy extra bee, and they are actually a really decent size. So if you didn't know about these, um, these are a healthy extra bee. You can make so many things with them. You can use them obviously as a pita and fill them with chicken and salad, or alternatively, you can use them as a naan bread, which is what we're going to do this evening. So on top of here, I'm basically going to mix some butter, some lazy garlic and some coriander, fresh coriander. And I'm just going to essentially put it on the top, all of that, um, and then pop that in the oven for five minutes. So that's super easy. And you've obviously got your rice, your chicken, your onions and your mushrooms for speed. And yeah, it doesn't look the most appetizing, but in here all day, I've had one, two, three, four. Five, kind of like five big chicken breasts cooking on low they've been cooking for around six hours now so they are nice and cooked i didn't put any water or anything in with them no flavors nothing like that i just put it on a low and what i'm going to do now i've got these claw things which i'll show you and i'm going to pull the chicken apart so it's shredded pulled chicken essentially and that's what makes this recipe so nice is because you're having it as like a pulled chicken rather than pieces that you might fry off i just find it makes it a little bit more luxurious a little bit more tasty um so I'm going to go ahead and pull this chicken, show you what it looks like after. And then I'm just going to chop up two onions and like however many mushrooms you want really. Um, I'll probably do, I don't know. These are like the chestnut mushrooms, you know, like the brown ones because they didn't have any more. I'll probably do that many mushrooms just chopped up in slices. Chop up my onions in slices again, fry that off and then I'll show you the next step. This is what the little um, Tupperware I was talking about comes like in the boxes. And basically what I've done is I've done 105 grams of the curry powder. I've mixed the extra hot and the medium together um, so that, it, you know, it's not too crazy hot. That's a, a slit in the bowl, it's not a hair. <laughs> Don't get freaked out. 105 grams, so that works out as 15 sins. However, when I show you the chicken, there is a lot of chicken here, so we could probably get five portions out of it. So if you divide 15 by five, three portion three sins per portion which is amazing so this is what the chicken looks like all um pulled these claws are amazing for pulling any kind of meat gammon pork beef chicken i will leave them linked down below we've had them for years now and they are an absolute go-to so i pulled all of that chicken and then here i've just got all my onions and my mushrooms frying off so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the sauce. So I've just put in the powder and you want to do cold water with this and let the uh, let the hob heat up the sauce to let it thicken and you want to use like kind of like a little whisk thing. I'm just going to figure out now with my calculations how much cold water I'm going to put in and then I will let you know. I've just put in 650 millilitres of cold water. This was the whisk thing I'm on about and what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to 
stand here for a good, I don't know, however long it takes. And I'm just going to mix this up and you'll find that it will get thicker. All of the like crumbly bits will sort of all mix together and then this will just become your curry sauce. This is nearly done so I'm going to turn that off. And whilst I'm doing this, I'm just going to turn my oven on and preheat my oven to 180 degrees so that we can work on the naan bread. So yeah, just be patient with this. It might look at the start that it's like a runny, horrible mess and look like Shrek Swamp but... If you keep mixing and when the heat gets to it, it will become a really nice thick Chinese curry sauce. Next step is the naan bread. So in here I have melted a teaspoon of butter, which is one and a half sins. Um, I've put in one and a half teaspoons of lazy garlic and then I've just chopped up some fresh coriander. And I've got the pita here and I'm just gonna spread this all across the pizza bread. Similar to how I do my um, garlic bread, but the only difference is obviously this is a lot thicker. Um, bread and we've added the coriander so that it's similar to a naan bread. You can add cheesy naan bread, you could probably even make like a peshwari naan bread if you have some coconut and you want to like make it that sort of Indian style um, but because this is just like a Chinese chicken curry I'm just sticking with the standard garlic pita bread and then I'm just going to spray it with some garlic fry light to keep, keep within the theme um, and then I'm just going to pop it in the oven on 180 for around five to seven minutes. I've just mixed in my mushrooms and my onions to the sauce mix. My rice is nearly done and I've just warmed up my poor chicken. I'm gonna add this sauce into the poor chicken in the slow cooker just because it's a much bigger space. My naan bread is literally got two minutes left and then we'll be good to serve it up and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've just added it bit by bit and this is the last bit to add. So I've just literally mixed in this with that pulled chicken. Look how nice that looks. Sounds horrendous, I'm sorry. But this is your Mayflower chicken curry and I'll just plate up the rest now. Here it all is plated up, looks and smells delicious. So this is the naan bread, which is one and a half sins and your healthy extra B. So the healthy extra B is the pita bread and then the one and a half sins is for the butter I've used with the garlic and the fresh coriander. And then we've obviously got our three sins worth of chicken mayflower curry. As you can see, this is a really big portion. So although it was a lot of sauce we used, we've still got so much left in that slow cooker to have as batch cook and to freeze as well. So all together, this fake away is four and a half sins plus your healthy extra B. I know there's not massives of speed. Um, you obviously do have the onions and the mushrooms. Normally when I have a meal, I would like to add a third of my plate of speed. But because this is a fake away and we eat it when we are going to like when we feel like we're going to order an actual takeaway i don't mind that it's not got massives of speed but it's better than having a normal proper takeaway so yeah i hope that you enjoy this one if you do recreate it do tag me on instagram or let me know what you think um but yeah and the finale the last recipe of this fake away video is going to be dedicated to a salt and pepper crispy Chinese chicken meal. This is, I know I say it on every single video and every single recipe I've just shared with you, one of my favourites. I mean, it, it really is. And it's, I think it's because it's one of those that is so simple to make and it really does taste similar to an actual salt and pepper chicken dish from the Chinese so you're like I know with some fake ways yeah you can do them and they taste kind of similar but this tastes if not better than the actual Chinese shop one so I'll just talk through the ingredients like I do normally you don't need much for this um, it's kind of one of those that you've probably got the ingredients in the cupboard however you might need to get some corn starch corn flour if you don't I always tend to have that because this is a popular recipe that I do um, so the first thing you need is some chicken thigh fillets I just get these from Aldi and I always get the boneless and the skinless and I try to get the ones that look the least fatty if there is like loads of like white fat on there then I will cut, cut that off before doing anything with my chicken but I always look for the least fatty one. You need one red onion diced up nice and finely. You need um, one red pepper and one red 
and one green pepper. You also need some spring onions. I've just chopped up around four there. If I need more, I'll always chop up some more, but that to me looks plenty. I've then got one chopped up red chilli and one chopped up green chilli. Then I've got some matchstick carrots, which I've just thinly sliced up. You need one egg, you need some sweetener, salt and pepper, some of this Chinese five spice. You also need, now I, oh God, oh golly gosh. You need, um, how much do I do here? Uh, 50 grams of corn flour, corn starch I think it's also called. Um, 50 grams of that is nine sins. So yes, yeah, a lot of sins, but this will do all of those chickens, which will probably serve four people. So when you split the corn flour sins between whoever you're feeding, it works out really, really low. Then I've just got some white wine vinegar there and then some soy 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 sauce light or dark whatever you've got i've got light there and then just some fry light so i've chopped all of this up just nice and quick and then i'm going to be also needing some chicken stock any chicken stock will do this one's just from aldi it's really cheap and then we'll be serving ours with some good old basmati rice this is the aldi basmati rice it's in like a purple sachet and it is the best rice it's the easiest rice to cook like i really struggle with rice cooking but i put on a timer for 11 minutes and i put this in boiling water and as soon as that 11 minutes is off my timer i get it out of the hot water and it's just really fluffy and not overcooked so that's how i cook my rice nicely but yeah let's get started with this recipe first step is to put in a load of a lot of salt and pepper be really generous with it this is a salt and pepper chicken so you want to be able to taste that salt and you want to be able to taste that pepper so don't be shy with the old grinder and um, grind quite a lot in there and then i've just whisked up one egg that's all you need and i'm just going to essentially coat all of this chicken in the egg so that it gets that sticky texture ready for us to pop all over the corn starch so yeah give this a good old whisk make sure that all the egg is coated all of the chicken salt and pepper and then we'll we'll add the corn flour so it looks a bit revolting not gonna lie um but just trust the process bear with me guys and girls um all of the corn starch is mixed in with this i'm now going to pop it in my active fry on the like meat setting i've got the tfl active fry so it allows me to have a different setting i'm going to put this in for 30 minutes and basically the um corn starch will make what it's like kind of like crispy and fried like you know like kfc chicken or like salt and pepper chicken from the chinese that's what the corn starch does so it doesn't look like it's going to go like that but in the active fry it will crisp up I'm not sure, to be honest, if this would work in the oven. It might do, so give it a go. Um, but if you haven't got an Act I really, really recommend them. They are amazing. We barely use our oven, to be honest, nowadays because we've got the Act and it's just so much easier, so much quicker, so much less washing and everything like that so there are loads of activities out there on the market so if you haven't got one i definitely invest in one i will maybe leave in the comments down below if i find a recipe that's similar to this that you can do in the oven because i know how annoying it is when you look at a recipe you really like it and then you realize you haven't got the utensils to actually make it so i will keep an eye out to make sure that there is a recipe for this that you can use in the oven as well so she is just now going to go in the act fry for 30 minutes on the chicken setting apologies for all the noise in the background we've got the kettle boiling stock and we've got the act fry cooking the chicken but the next step you want to do is fry off your onion and I've just added some lazy garlic as well um, I forgot to mention that if you want to add garlic it's optional I've just added like a teaspoon of lazy garlic so I've let that fry for one minute I'm now going to add in my sliced um, peppers you just want to make sure they're sliced like that and then I'm also going to mix that all about and then I'm going to add in my chilies Give that a good old mix until all of the veggies and everything softens. Now I'm adding 100 millilitres of chicken stock. Give that a good mix around. Then I'm adding in my carrots just to absorb a bit of that chicken stock. So colourful. I've got the cameraman with me now, so I thought I'd show you the sauces that I'm adding. So I'm just adding a tablespoon of light sauce, slight soy sauce, and then I'm gonna add like half a tablespoon of this white wine vinegar just to give it a little tang. That much. Mix that all together. 
the chicken is nearly done in the act fry. It's got like 20 seconds. You'll probably hear it beep in a minute. So this is the kind of like topping, I guess, with all the veggies and the spices that you add on top of the chicken and the rice. I have cooked it until all of the liquid has absorbed and all of the veggies are cooked and nice and soft. And then for the Chinese like five spice kind of, um, that's the act fry talking to me for the like I guess seasoning what I've put in here is I've put two tablespoons of Chinese five spice now this smell really or oh, it just goes through me I think it's the aniseed that I really don't like the smell of so don't be put off it when you smell this I don't know I just I just absolutely despise the smell um so I've got two tablespoons of that and then I've got two tablespoons of sweetener I personally don't sin sweetener if you do then obviously just count that within your sins and then I've just put a generous amount again of salt and pepper in here and I've given that a good old mix now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put probably two tablespoons of this back into the actor fry with the chicken and cook it for a further 10 minutes just to really crisp in that up and then this will obviously add all of the seasoning but as long as the um chicken and the actor fry is all cooked now it doesn't really matter how long you do this process for it depends on how crispy you like it so i'm going to pop in two tablespoons of this it depends on the flavor and how intense you want the chinese five spice i'll pop in two tablespoons have a little look at it see whether i feel like it's coated the chicken enough and then you can always sprinkle this on top once it's cooked anyway as like a salt and pepper seasoning so that's what i'm going to go ahead and do this is all done and i've just popped on my rice for 11 minutes which i've got on my timer there because it makes the perfect fluffy rice for having it 11 minutes no little more and no 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 more no less wow 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 this is what it's turned out like in the act fry and it's ignore the state of it oh it just looks and smells amazing so what i've done is just i've just plated up my rice i'm going to top it with my chicken and my vegetables and then i'm going to sprinkle along sprinkle along sprinkle on some spring onions and then it is good to go so nine sins for all of this it's probably going to serve four portions maybe three so obviously sin accordingly but it smells amazing and i cannot wait to eat it here is the finished salt and pepper chicken i'm calling it three sins just to be safe but honestly the video it just doesn't do it justice because it smells amazing and crispy chicken salt and pepper Chinese five spice with all of the veggies, nice and speedy, with some sin-free basmati rice. There we are. I hope that your bellies aren't too rumbling. I hope they aren't too hungry. I hope they aren't talking to you because I know that you are probably really, really, really starving right now after watching those three recipes. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to let me know if you do recreate any of those dishes. Be sure to tag me on Instagram. I love seeing you guys making recipes and it just makes me think, do you know what these videos that I'm doing, me cooking away, chatting away, then they are worth doing and that you guys really, really enjoy them. So yeah, please don't forget to like this video, comment down below what your favourite recipe was. If you guys have got any fake away recipes that you think that I need to try, then please let me have the recipe. I would be forever grateful and I will see you guys next week in another video. Take care, stay safe and we will catch up very soon.